Hey everybody. What we are looking at is my Farloella catfish hanging on the intake to my hang on the back filter with some assorted guppies. It was a little more broadside than it is now, of course, as I moved up with the camera. It kind of scooched around back to hide. But I was looking at it earlier with the light shining on it, and it really gives a good display of how vivid the scales are on this fish. Uh, this is a really unusual Farloella. I've had a few of them over the years. Uh, I had a knob-nosed whiptail catfish that had the really sort of long proboscis on the front end the same way this fish does, except that one had a knob on the end of it. It was kind of weird looking. Uh, this one actually has kind of a stumpy tail compared to most of the ones I've had. But I also don't recall any of the other ones I've had ever having such bold and distinct individual scale patterns like that. It almost looks like a garfish or something. It makes it look even more prehistoric than these fish already look. So there's a little bit better look at it. You can even get a bit of a look at that long snout off the front of it. It's going to be interesting to see how this fish does as far as keeping the tank clean. It is an off wax grazer or an algae eating scraping type fish as you can see by the way it hangs on with its sucker mouth. Uh, I did have a big mystery snail in this tank for a long time that did a great job of keeping the tank clean but unfortunately it pretty much dead. I'm not sure if it's officially dead yet but it's as good as dead so it's probably not going to be back in this tank. I do have a small clown pleco in here that I believe does a pretty good job at keeping the tank clean as well. But now that the snail's not in here, it's going to be up to the pleco and this whiptail catfish here. Or sometimes they're called twig catfish. So it'll be interesting to see how clean the tank stays and whether or not this fish makes an appreciable difference in you know the algae that grows on the glass surfaces. And of course in this tank we've also got all that wooden surface. Can't squat down like that anymore. My knees feel like they're ready to blow out on me. Unfortunately, probably not going to get too much of a look at it from this direction either. The water and the glare and everything, as soon as I get close enough it's going to dart away if I can even get close enough. Almost. So there you go, just a quick look at it. This is a 20 gallon tank, so that gives you a little more of a idea of perspective on how big that fish is. I would say from the tip of its proboscis all the way down, and I know that's not a proboscis, but it sure looks like one. Uh, from the very tip of its end of its nose, whatever you call that, all the way to the end of its tail is maybe six or seven inches but it really is just whip thin, so it's not really uh, much of a bio load as far as what you might think of uh, you know, a four inch fish or a six inch fish or something. Let me get up close enough, I can get the glare to go away a little bit. Get that one last good look at him. And there you can see what I'm talking about with its tail, it just sort of ends. It does fork and branch, if it splays it out, you can see it does have a couple of little filaments that give it that sort of whip tail look, but I've had whip tails in the past that uh, literally the filament on the tail was half the length of the body of the fish, and this fish is not like that at all. So again, very unusual looking Farloella. The term whip tail and twig catfish basically just a sort of an umbrella term that covers all the different Farloella species. And I don't have any idea which one this is specifically. All I know is it was sold from PetSmart as a twig catfish. And there you go. There's a good look at it. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you're subscribed. And don't forget, of course, this is my 20-gallon angelfish tank. So thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.